take her over here. So anyway, now we're going to start putting the um, read operation circuit together. So let's get into it. So just as a quick recap from the previous video, the main highlights that need to be taken into account when we're building the circuit. And the first is that we um, noticed that in the documentation it says that it needs some um, gate buffers. Uh, or it's recommended to have gate buffers on both the signals going to the drive and for the output um, signal coming into the, out of the drive. So um, we need to add these. And also we went through all the uh, different signals, there's more than this page, and identified the signals that um, you know, both incoming and outgoing that are of interest for the read operation. And we also had a look at the um, pinout for the connector to find out exactly on what pins the different signals are and the power, power um, in inputs. So, I'm a bit off camera and I worked on this, taking the different signals and defining their the name, the role, um, what is their um, active state or if they're going to be permanently held to a certain state what pin they are on and then a um, color of the wire that will be used for that specific signal so anyway here we see the <laughs> first stage um, result of the whole investigation is the so we have the pin connector there and then um, color coded wires I, d I didn't have enough colors to make every single signal individual but um, I separated the, if they were like white white then they're so far apart that it's going to be very difficult to mess, th mess them up and um, so this is the starting point to connecting this up and then um, the next phase is going to be the um, required gate logic and um, I thought I'd just put it on a breadboard for now. So I'm going to start working on that. So I found some chips. I need three of them. And um, one of them is going to be, or one type is going to be this hex inverting gate. And this will be controlling the, the inputs. So I'm one comes in and then zero goes out. And if zero comes in, then one goes out. So that's why we had that weird specification, the way a weird way of writing the specification, because it is actually trying to give the state of the before it goes into the input of the drive. And then the other inverter to be used is actually this one here hex inverter with Smith trigger inputs so this is for the output coming from the drive and the Schmidt is the idea with this it's it's yeah like a better implementation on the input side to be able to actually give you a reliable one and zero on the output side depending on the if for example the input signal is a little bit um, uh, not really that clean digital ones and zeros then it can actually try and clean it up as best it can and give you a clean one and zero representation on the output of the output side of this um, trigger. So I did a bit of mapping on how these wires should go to which pin and, and stuff. So I will get to work and um, wire this up. So that's the first phase completed and. Um, Next I'll just wire in the power for the chips. So that's the power connected in. And um, this is actually not a very high speed um, configuration, so I'm not too worried about the extra wire lengths and stuff right now. We'll see if we need to modify it if it actually doesn't work due to that, but I doubt it. Yep. So um had the um, uh, pull-up resistors for the 
outputs from the drive. And, um, I'm not going to put any bypass capacitors just to make sure I get lots of comments. So, added the um, pull up resistors on the outputs. Uh, it's a bit difficult to see. Anyway, so um, so far so good. And uh, then, of course, now the question is how is this to be controlled? So, um, my first pass um, device will be just a standard Arduino Mega. And um, then, of course, you need to generate a piece of code for it. We'll look into that also. So anyway, but the first thing is how I get this wired up. So anyway, the rat's nest is completed, so the mega is connected in. And I need to remember to reset the program, because I don't actually know what program I have. And then um, also apply power to here, so it'll be um, plus 5 volts, plus 12 volts and ground. And then I need to um, yeah, power it up slowly with with a current limiting power supply just to check that there's no short circuits or nothing will start to smoke. And I actually don't know if something will... we'll see if something... Uh, I'll try and film it also a bit so I don't know if this will actually... the motor will start or something might actually activate. Because I have no idea what the default state of these um, lines are. Well, so... Uh, reset connecting power. Okay, connected the power in. And, uh, yeah, and then I've cleared the program so there's not. It's just a normal uh, empty loop running on that one. And this one I've set to 5, and this I've set to 12. And the 5 volts goes to um, the other TTL logic. Uh, and then to the drive and then the 12 volts basically it goes to the drive so now I have current limiting on so then we can see let me free up the current limiting so that's 30 milliamps <laughs> it's not very exact but it's it's um yeah 5.1 uh, this power supplies not a digital power supplies but anyway, so it looks like we got 30 milliamps, and that would be kind of what I would expect taking into account all the circuits, so that's not a short circuit. I really doubt that anything's going to... And I'll leave the current limitation on. We might need to increase it. Um, and then we're going to see what happens when we um, add 12 volts, and that could be that the motor will just start. We might see a slight step movement because uh, the status of the of the signals is not really known. So no current, 12 volts. So that's good. So I would say successful power up, and this is still alive, working. So um, uh, what do we need now then? Oh yeah, there's something to do with software. <laughs> So okay, I'm going to get to work and um, write some so a software piece for that so we can actually test the, the functionality. So with the speed of video we have some code now. Um, I'm just going to give a brief overview, I'm not going through every line. Anyway, the first thing is I created a little bit of a trick for um, the boolean states when it comes to those an inverter. Output side, and then I put in the <coughs> each parameter. I actually added the full copied in the full description of it, and then I created a variable for it, and then I created a constant which says that it's you know, uh, what basically the parameter, and then uh, it's uh, the pin the address, and is it input or output? So created that kind of a list here. And then um, uh, created a single execution loop basically. 
And I did this a little bit of tricking again to um, when you read a value that it understands that it's inverted when it comes from the um, drive. Well, the usual I set up the serial port and then um, yeah, setting up the input output ports. And then the for output ports their initial state. And then getting the initial value from input values. And here's the main key thing. So single execution. And um, what this does is that um, it, um, it issue ah it executes a set of drive commands. So um, the first one is it selects the drive. It disables writing. It puts on the motor. It actually checks the ready signal. So is there a ready? Does it find a ready signal within a timeout period? And then just continues. And when it's ready, it says ready is valid. And then it um, checks if there's a the spindle index. So every time the spindle makes a 360 degree rotation, you get a signal. So it's it's actually trying to see is the, is there that kind of pulse or is is that pulse running? Um, and then it um, does the same trick with the data line finally. So then it checks if there is actually data flow of ones and zeros coming in uh, from the drive. And then if all those are um, satisfied, then basically it, it, um, yeah, it turns the motor off, deselects the drive. And, and, and it only does that once. So every time you reset the mega, then uh, it executes this process once. So what I thought is that we'll just have a, uh, a look at that, how it works. So here we have the complete setup and I've actually added an oscilloscope. Um, and the top line is the index and this is the data. So, um, and then I've got a triggering on the index. So let's let it start. So you see you get index pulses and then the data gets triggered. So if we take a single case, single tri trigger case, so now it triggers on this one here, on that index. And as you see it gets, basically it's reading the, so you get an index and then it reads the, the ones and zeros from the track and then you get a new index and then it starts. And basically the, the you should get the same data repeating because it, I, I don't change the track. So between the, those indexes, it should be the, the exact same data. And of course, using an oscilloscope, it's not that um, easy to actually do such validation. So if you if you actually zoom in, then you see that uh, yeah, it's not really able able to um, <laughs> scan the data really correct. So anyway, a little bit of fiddling with the single um, trigger function. And um, it's supposed to be a falling edge directly on the drive itself. So then it's this, because this is after the inverter, so then it's the ri raise, rising. So, so here it's hitting the spindle, hitting the 360 degree. Uh, turn and then it starts with the data. So basically, every time it hits this pulse, then uh, which you can't see right now, if I trigger it again, I have to make it even smaller. Trigger it again. up there then it starts and then it's the data stream. So here you see it repeats there, there, there. And then if you zoom in enough then the data quality of, of this becomes much better. Or the, you know this is a rat's nest of wires and stuff so not exactly the best opportunity for it to measure but if one actually zooms in enough and triggers on the rising edge of the 
index pulse, then, then you see that the, the data was looking a lot better. So it <laughs> doesn't look like, if you zoom in here and look at it, it's, ah, that's, that, that's just crap. But then of course it's because of the sampling, the oscilloscopes. Look. So if you if we zoom in enough, then, then it actually turns out that the, the data quality of this, the, uh, yeah, the binary data, the binary waveform quality of this signal is actually quite a lot better. Plus, taking into account this uh, yeah, rat's nest of a measurement environment, I think that's, that's actually something that can be used. So as we saw when I hit the reset on the Mega, then it's going through the same sequence that I actually described in the software. So anyway, now we have um, a read operation circuit. So that was the extent I intended for this video. So um, now we see we have a setup and we have some software. We can actually um, stream the data out of one track and the um, Moving forward, the next operations is to actually try and um, capture that data, um, check if it's systematically the same. So every time it makes a 360 rotation, you should get the same data out of the track. And then we should, um, well, in the future, hopefully in a future episode, we can actually diagnose and extract the um, binary data from it. Um, yeah reverse engineer the encoding and, um, yeah get to that so if you're interested in this kind of low level um, deep dives then um, subscribe set the bell and there will be more see you in the next one